Trigger warning for easily butthurt, quote, rational skeptics. See y'all in the comments and the dislikes. Hi, folks. My sniffles aren't entirely gone this week, so just bear with me on that. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Tommy. I'm a data scientist with a master's degree in biology. I do research in computational ecology primarily, and right now I'm working on fossil databases. So back in January, I made a video talking about historian and prominent Jesus mythicist, Dr. Richard Carrier and Jesus mythicists like him, who appropriate Bayes' theorem and other statistical language to defend their positions without subjecting their results to the same kind of rigorous professional standards that professional statisticians and academic data scientists, hello, uh, like me, have to use. Did I just accuse Richard Carrier of cultural appropriation? Yes. Yes, I think I did. Up until recently, this was the most popular video on my channel, and the comments on my video have been pretty salty. Salty, salty skeptics. They even insulted my cute animated sunflower. All right, we'll be serious from here on in. No cute shit. My content has moved more in the direction of disability rights of late, so I wanted to respond to these criticisms before I lose this thread entirely. The most common complaint I got was being accused of misrepresenting Dr. Carrier's work, which, if true, is not my intention. But I get the same vibe from these guys as I get from, like, Jordan Peterson fans who claim that his critics misrepresent him. But my objection still stands. Is there a statistically significant correlation between date of first attestation after death, or correlation between rank raglan criteria, or whatever factor you want, any correlation between that relevant factor and historicity across a meaningful, statistically meaningful sample. If there is, then there are equations we can use to explicitly calculate the prior probability of the history of Jesus, for example. Why haven't these mythicists put in that hard work? Well, you know what? I decided to do the experiment that I think Dr. Richard Carrier should have done from the beginning. I built a pool of 62 figures. 31 of those figures were historical figures. 31 of those were ahistorical figures. I calculated an individual answer for each of the rank Raglan criteria questions computed a total score, and collected a whole bunch of other statistics and tossed them into R, and then did to them what I do on a day-to-day -day basis in my job. My personal opinions on theology and historicity are irrelevant for this discussion, only the data. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Based on these data, there is no statistically significant correlation between rank Raglan score and historicity, either by total score or by individual answers. There is no statistically significant correlation between rank Raglan score and a figure having been euhemerized, that is, a mythological figure presented as though it were a historical figure. Now again, while this is completely meaningless because it's not statistically significant, we can use this equation to calculate the explicit prior probability of Jesus being historical. And the my rank raglan calculation for Jesus was 13. A lot of popular sources have it at 18, um, which gives us a range of 43% for 18 and 46% 13 probability of Jesus being historical according to these data, which again is not a statistically meaningful conclusion. We can also use this equation to calculate the prior probability of Jesus having been euhemerized at between 10 to 15 percent, again using the 13 to 18 range. Though again, these numbers, and I cannot stress this enough, are not statistically meaningful because there was no statistically significant correlation. A little algebra allows us to rearrange the above equations 
to calculate what rank Raglan score Jesus would need to have gotten for the prior probability of Jesus being ahistorical to be 66%, 58, and 66% prior probability of having been euhemerized, 36, which is both impossible given that the maximum rank Raglan score is 22. This took me a couple of days to put together working at night in between grading freshman ecology homework. I didn't have the resources of a patron-sponsored book deal behind me. Look, I've gone out of my way to say that there are valid points to the mythicist position. I am not a priori anti-mythicist, but this Bayesian mythicism that has become so popular in the discourse lately is lazy, unrigorous, pseudo-historical nonsense that shouldn't be taken seriously by anyone, much less anyone with a real respect for statistics and data. I dropped my mic now, but my mic is old and I'm afraid I'd break it. Now, you might notice that there is more to the video. Uh, so this video, the rest of it is a technical breakdown of the study, including its limitations and where we go from here. And if you don't want to watch that, you just wanted to see a good old debunking, then we'll part company here. I wish you could stay to the end, but if not, take care uh, and we'll see you next time. Still here? Okay. Let's talk about materials and methods for a minute. I assigned a value of one for each of the criterion if the figure met the criterion, but also assigned zero if they didn't, or if the sources don't mention the issue, or if there is a conflict of sources. I was doing this all at once, so it helped to make my grading consistent across all the figures. I deemed a figure to have been euhemerized if the majority of sources depict the figure as historical, but the consensus of historians supports mythology. Unfortunately, I could only find five figures that met those criteria, so those calculations are even more meaningless than the main body. Generally, euhemerization is so rare, it's, it's difficult to quantify, which is, I would say, limit one of this study. Limit two of this study has been tracking down primary sources. I had to appeal to popular sources for many answers. And obviously, if I want to publish this, I would probably pay a research assistant to chase down these information in better sources. Uh, but I doubt it would affect the overall calculation, like going to the, uh, the sagas to find out that uh, Loki's mother was Laufey versus going to Wikipedia to find out the same bit of information. What I think would affect the calculations, and this is limit three, is that there's really a lack of objective rubric. Like the first rank Raglan criterion is mother is a royal virgin. I probably should split into two categories. Mother is royal and mother is a virgin. And I think the problem with rank Raglan criteria is that they're all so subjective and open to interpretation that we want a concrete printed out rubric with lots of detail and maybe introduce multiple scores and come up with sort of an average score for each, I think that would probably be, be much fairer. Now I want to talk briefly about the rest of the data in the set. The so rank Raglan is supposed to, among genuine historians, not pseudo-historians, describe the hero in Indo-European mythologies. So I tagged each character with a source, ancient history, anime, Indo-European mythology, etc. Rank Raglan score didn't correlate with source in this sample. The highlighted column is Indo-European mythology, and while Indo-European mythology does tend to have a high Rank Raglan score, there's also a considerable variance. So it doesn't really even do the job it was designed for by non-crazy historians. So most Rank Raglan criteria refer to royal men. So I checked Rank Raglan score against gender, status as a royal, and what I'm going to call pseudo-royal, like leaders in their field or otherwise called king, like in the case of Elvis and Michael Jackson. There was no statistically significant correlation for gender, but there was a strong correlation for both royalty and pseudo-royalty. Really, Rank Raglan score is just 
uh, able to predict whether a character is royal or not. It does not serve as a meaningful basis for historicity. I also did a principal components analysis. Uh, so one with just the rank Raglan criteria and one with all the statistics. Uh, you can see that there is, even, even though historical and ahistorical are sort of merged together, that historical tends to cluster toward the bottom and ahistorical tends to cluster toward the top. So there is definitely some uh, way that we might, with more data, be able to distinguish. And obviously, when we add in all statistics, that distinction becomes much clearer. But it also includes historicity. So it's telling the computer how far apart they are by historicity. So the PCA with all values is probably much less useful. I'd like to continue adding to this data set in the future as I sort of think of more people to add. And I would really like to rerun this experiment in the future once all the kinks are worked out. And once I get some time, I'd really like to publish this study. All right, so this is the real end, friends. Take care.